Uh, welcome back. Continuing our discussion that we started, this is actually part two of the video about theft deterrent system, <clears throat> a module, how it's related to the PCM, the main module, one communicating to the other one. Now, before that, in the other video, I, I introduced a new uh, gadget, so to say. For let's say if you can't crank, you can't turn over your engine, I spoke about something for spark plug wires. Well, this is another one. This is the going to the fuel injectors. You want to see if there's a pulse to the fuel injectors. If you think there's something wrong with the fuel injector, you put this against the connector of the fuel injector. Here's the point. And let's say, for example, you see this? You see the light flickering? It'll flicker, thus showing you that there's a pulsation going on, right? Why? Because the fuel injectors are being turned on and off by the ground of this PCM module or the main module. It's turning it on and off, on and off in milliseconds in order to open and close the fuel injectors to get fuel into the cylinders. Well, there is something called before that we use, it's like a neon light, um, when you plug it into the actual connector, remember there's, the connector has two points, right? A ground and a positive. Well, you physically, you have to put that light into it. This doesn't require that. It's like wireless. These two gadgets are wireless. You put it to the connector, you find the right spot. You find the right spot, it'll flicker, telling you, hey, there is some pulsing going on from the computer. Now, again, for accuracy, I'm not using it for timing. All I'm using it for is simple, to see if there's a pulse going on to the fuel injector. It'll tell me at least something, and that's the main purpose of it. That's why I recommend these two gadgets over here, so to say. Again, not for accuracy. It doesn't replace an analyzer. It doesn't, repl doesn't replace a scope. It does not replace a scanner or any measuring devices. That's what I want to stress. It's just a quick test to see if there's a spark plug wire, a spark, an arc, or a fuel injector being pulsed on and off, on and off. I hope that I explain that. You'll see the hands-on. You'll see, you'll understand it much better when I go to the fuel injectors under the hood. You'll understand it better when I go to the spark plug wires. Not to over reiterate the same point over and over again, but tool of the day, this is what I recommend. We had a problem over here where I specified before an actual scenario happened where a customer where the wife said to the husband, listen, I think I had problems starting the car. Husband goes to the car, uses the remote, can't get in. Why? The doors don't open. Can't even get into the ignition key to turn that. We spoke about this and please see the previous ones that see the previous ones where theft return system goes to the main computer it gives it an enable. Enable is always an input. Always an input. All right? To allow the fuel pump to start, to allow the starter to start, to also allow the door lock to go to EBCM, electronic body control module. The body control module is responsible for the accessories. It's responsible for, for the door locks. It's responsible for the lights, responsible for seat belts, for the accessories but not responsible for air-fuel mixture. That's the PCM's job right here. So therefore, it allows the door locks and it allows the ignition, uh, ignition key, and that allows, as you see over here, the starter, it allows the fuel enable, which goes to the power control module. We're gonna go over the schematic, okay? So two things. First of all, I can't get into the car except manual, right? Theft deterrent module might be a problem, or EBCM might be a, a, a problem, right? Well, I do it manually. I open the door, my key manually. Let's study and analyze the key. See, whatever I highlight in yellow means these are main components in the schematic to concentrate. One thing you don't see here. That we always see is a relay. You don't see a relay here, do you? One thing to pay attention with schematics. Hot at all times. Hot in run and start. Pay attention also to the fuse rating. The fuse rating. 10 amps here. 
20 amps here. Pay attention to where this is located, power distribution. We all know under the hood you'll find it in, in lift up the fuse cover and you'll find the fuses, correct? Now, a pink blue and a pink blue over here and a red wire over here, fine. Now, why is this 20 amps or this is 10 amps? Let's pay attention to the ratings. Let's get, really get good at schematics. Look how much this is feeding. This is feeding this module. Also, it's feeding 10, 12 volts to this module, two modules. That's what, it's 20 amps. This is feeding one module, 10 amps. Feeding, yes, two pins, correct, but one module. This is rated more. Why? It's feeding two modules. This is rating less, feeding one module. Let's pay attention to those things. As we can see over here, we scan through the schematic, right? What do we see over here? We see that in this module, you can think of it as a theft deterrent system module, like we saw over here, right? We saw this has to get 12 volts, okay? How does it get 12 volts? From the fuse. 12 volts over here, 12 volts over here, why? This is just a piece of wire, we don't lose any voltage. Okay, so current flows here, splits up and it flows over here. Ignition, positive voltage, ignition, and this is a, 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 a B minus, a B plus, B plus over here. Two of them over here, okay? When does this work? Hot and run and start. This must come from the ignition switch because it's a run and switch, run and start. The lock, the positions of the ignition switch, first you have lock, unlock, then you have accessories. We know accessories just when you're not cranking, but when you have the lights come on, it does the self-test, okay? And also, the radio comes on, the lights come on. Sometimes the lights come on even when you don't even need the key on, right? That's what it means, like hot at all times means, let's say when you put your adapter, it's always hot. You don't need no key, nothing. Just the end of the car. The other point that I forgot to make was uh, about getting into the car. Once you get into the car, right, you open the door, you turn on the key. Usually it'll tell you, oh, theft deterrent system, this uh, problem or security or whatever. That's fine if there's enough voltage for that panel and dashboard to be turned on around 10 volts, 10 and a half volts. Let's say your battery is completely dead. Let's say the ground wire is loose. Let's say the terminals are corroded, right? Therefore, that in the dashboard, that all the lights that come on will not come on. It will warn you there's a theft deterrent system or you have a problem with the theft deterrent, deterrent module. Right? Why? Because the lights don't come on. There's, the ground is loose. If the ground is loose, there's zero volts. Nothing comes on. So now what do you do? I don't know what the problem is now, right? Usually if you have nothing come on, maybe there's a ground. You have to tighten the ground on the negative because that goes to the engine block. But let's take our scenario over here. I don't want to, again, go over the same point over and over again. But this comes from run and start. We got into the car. We got into the ignition key. We're turning the ignition key, trying to get it started, run and start. And what am I doing when I'm doing that? I'm sending 12 volts to this theft deterrent module over here. That recognizes, hey, you know what? He turned the key in run and start. It's in run and start. It's in start position, right? This gives it the voltage telling, telling it, hey, I just got 12 volts. Where did I get it from? From, from the guy who just turned the key in a start position that's where i got my 12 volts from what does that mean to the theft turn that means the guy has the right key why because if you ever notice those keys there's a black part of it at the end of it that has a chip in it that has all the information it's like a transmitter and then there's a module which is, which is a receiver that transmits the vin number all the all the valuable codes and information to tell the theft deterrent system hey this is the right key i can start the car now right this is what's happening you turn the key it's the right key that's the most important thing right it's not a screwdriver that's 
right? Somebody's trying to break into the car. It's the actual code coming from the key, from the key, in the in start position, giving me 12 volts. Hey, I'm ready to start. The theft deterrent module says, if I'm ready to start, well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna output something. What am I gonna output? I'm gonna output a fuel enable. I'm gonna output a starter enable. Okay, so right now the fact that I have 12 volts going to this tells me the battery is good. There's no problem with the battery. It's not the problem. So the output from here is an input to something else. If you're outputting something, that means it has to be an input to something else. If I have an input, that must mean something else as an output, depending how you look at it. Okay, now we have the proper key. We turn it correctly to the start position to get the starter enable, to give a fuel enable. I didn't give any 12 volts over here because I don't know what voltage or pulse or whatever it is, right? I'm just gonna put the meter there and I'm gonna look for something. But it's enable. Enable means in English, I'm, in, I'm allowing something to happen based from on that event, on that occurrence. This has the proper 12 volts from here. This tells it, hey, this is the right key. Let's start the car. Let's start the starter. Let's start the fuel injection system, right? And where does this go to? This is the PCM. Goes to theft turn fuel enable. You remember before we were talking about this? Enter the system input fuel enable. Actually, it's a pulse with modulation signal that I discussed in the other one. It is a signal. It's like a square wave going on and off, on and off. And that's what it's going to get. So what do we need? We need 12 volts first. Always. When you start looking at modules, what are you going to test for? The first thing, I need 12 volts to, look, to go to B+. Plus at this pin. What else do we need? We need 12 volts to go over here to this power control module and this theft deterrent system. So what's my point out of all these videos that I make, right? Got into the car, couldn't start it, the power locks didn't uh, didn't start, right? For the starter won't start, the ignition, I turned the ignition, that doesn't help. Well, why? In that scenario, what happened was this wire, this wire that you can see over here was broken from here to here was broken if this is broken guess what the theft turn module does not get the zero volts if it does not get the zero volts then try to think what will not happen right i could still get the 12 i could still get uh you still uh, i'm sorry if i don't get the 12 volts over here right going to turn this on right this doesn't help me over here Whatever comes from here doesn't help me. This first hot in all time means automatic I get 12 volts. Automatic. Forget about the key. Right? The fact that this will come, this is disabled. And if this is disabled, guess what? Can't get a, I can't start the starter. And I can't start the fuel, obviously. And I can't start the theft turn fuel enable selling giving it a pulse to the main computer because this doesn't get the 12 volts that's what that's what the problem was no battery no ignition key problem no fuses not even a relay that you don't even see over here simple just 12 volts didn't come here restore the 12 volts right it did everything came back no problem the wire was loose back and forth so that's how you test it. Always go for 12 volts. Always goes for the ground. Make sure you get ground. Then work, always go B plus first and ground. Always work. You have to have those two criteria first. Then you work backwards. Do I have 12 volts going to this pin? If you could get access to this module. This module PCM, remember, you have over 200 pins hard to get to. And it's always by distraught because it has to endure... Uh, has a heat sink on it, has to endure heat, has to endure vibration. That's the problem with these modules. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's very complex, but I hope I think I, I, I hope I'm improving the skills of schematic reading 
and troubleshooting diagnostics. And I can't stress the point. Please help me because I need help. Um, the membership is doing better. The, the uh, uh, subscribers doing much better. The minutes went up 10,000. But like I said, if everybody could help me with the views, it would really help me a lot. Okay? I don't want to do 40 views and make another video. If there's no interest. It just... It, I did that before, I and it it just flopped when I made videos like that. So please try to give me some views, okay? And like I said, this is diagnostics. The difference between a mechanic and an an automotive diagnostic technician is a mechanic change tires, CV joints, brakes. Fine, that's great. A diagnostic technician, automotive that means you know what? I'm able to troubleshoot computers. I'm able to troubleshoot modules. I'm able to troubleshoot and get to the component level or the module level. That's the difference between 25 years ago and today. If you learn this, if you absorb this and you enhance it, you understand what I just said, you can have a great future in this industry. If you do not understand electronics, you just go to a scanner, look at the code oxygen sensor, you just change, as happened with one of, one of a co-worker I used to work, change the oxygen sensor. Oh, that's great. Yeah, but the, the problem was the connector didn't have 12 volts. What are you changing the oxygen sensor for? Because the scanner told you to. No. You're going to be changing tires and oil changes and CV joints and why, why do you want to do that when this pays more money? You can make a good, comfortable living. Believe me, if you know diagnostics, the industry needs people who know electronics. It doesn't need people who can change brakes Everybody could do. look at the videos on YouTube. There's so many of them. That's why I don't do any videos about brakes. What can I possibly add that hasn't been said before about rotors and calipers and and, and, and uh, uh, transmissions? And I mean, it's all been done before already. I'm trying to come up with something different, but this is very hard to explain. I try to simplify it. Anyway, I don't like to elaborate too much. I lose the viewers, but. That's why I need the help for views, please. Get these two devices if you want. I'll show it to you hands-on. Like I said, you'll understand it much better. But it cannot replace measuring tools. It cannot replace measuring instruments of any sort. Just for a quick, do I have a fuel injector pulsing? Do I have a spark plug firing? That's all it is for. And take it for that and nothing more. Okay? Thanks for watching. See you again.